Greetings, this is Chester with The Samplist, and our sonic journey today is musical sampling's Horde Mandolin. Before we dive in, I'd like to make it crystal clear that the copy of this library we're reviewing was graciously provided to us by the developer. However, let me assure you that our commitment to delivering honest and transparent reviews remains unwavering. Our goal is to arm you with all the information you need to decide if this library deserves a spot in your musical toolkit. We put our attention to Horde Mandolin by Musical Sampling. It's not just any mandolin library, it's a game changer for composers and producers alike. Designed for contact, it features the expert playing of Jason Horde, a seasoned session player and producer. His expertise brings a lifelike quality to the library, which is essential for both virtuosic and simple, heartfelt mandolin performances. The Horde Mandolin Library is a testament to versatility and expressiveness, with three meticulously crafted legato patches and a total of 13 patches. It covers a wide spectrum of playing styles. One of the highlights is the Master Legato Main Patch, a true workhorse suitable for a range of musical contexts. For those looking for something more specific, the Chicken Peck variant offers repetition sustains optimized for rapid picking without losing the smooth legato transitions. Delving into the technicalities, Horde Mandolin requires the full version of Contact 581 and is not compatible with the free Contact player. The library is recorded in 48 kilohertz, 24-bit quality, and compressed into 2.4 gigabytes of NCW format for efficient storage. Available now at $139, it's an investment for serious composers and producers looking for quality mandolin sounds. The product is delivered via the Pulse downloader, ensuring a smooth installation process. Let's now explore the presets this library has to offer. All right, so let's start with this first patch. We have the Master Legato Main patch. And there's actually three legato patches in this master patch, and they're all separated by velocities. The first one is is kind of the main one I want to show you. And yes, this library can shred. This patch, it is triggered when you have a velocity of anywhere between 41 and 90. It's the primary range which uses the natural plucked legato articulation. It's like the bread and butter they're saying. And I use this for majority of the track I'll be playing later. Great patch. And I totally suggest getting like a MIDI effect and just yeah, fixing your, your velocity to like 64 or something and just playing with this for a while. You get so much out of this patch just in that velocity. If I fix the velocity all the way to 127 or anywhere between 91 and 127, that activates the hammer-on plough articulation up to a major second. So let me demonstrate. If I go beyond that major second, then... then it plays the note. So a lot of fun with that. If I go to a fix of one velocity, anywhere between one and 40, is a slide into pluck articulation. So a string slide to a target note, which is then plucked from a minor third up to an octave. And you can control the speed of the slide with this mod wheel. Mod wheel only really works with that patch, and uh, that's that's a lot of fun as well. So if you're looking to get some sliding notes up to an octave, uh, you can use that velocity, and that kind of explains that patch. Now we have the master legato chicken peck. It works the same way with the fixed velocities. It's 
just now we're in more of a the chicken peck variation. And it loves fast notes. Or repeated notes as well. So great for like repetition and things like that. It's cool. I also used that quite a bit in, in the song coming up. Fix 127, we have the hammer on pull off. And then we have a muted legato check and peck, which wraps up our legato. And what's fun with this UI is, you know, we just have the reverb. Nice and simple. I mean, keep it simple, right? So what I typically will do there is get that assigned and then map it in the DAW, put that as part of my automation and control it. Or as a set of forget it. All right, moving on. We have performance sustains. This patch offers four velocities. So the softest velocity triggers palm mute performances. So let's try that out. We'll turn off our uh, MIDI, fix MIDI effect here. And now we'll just use the keyboard. This is a nice one for like a kind of sweep in it a little bit, getting the chord out. That's a fun one. Now we'll do playable reps. This is a similar than with performance sustains where we, uh, there's four layers of, of velocity for this. And this patch, uh, compared to the other one, has uh, more of a specialization for quickly repeating notes. But the user manual doesn't say if it's like round robin or what it is, just mentions that it's specialized for that. And then also again, with the softest velocity, you get palm mute performance. A lot of fun there. You also get a couple more ways of playing this one. You get split keys. You also get a mute. Nice mute one with split keys. So you don't have to play soft if you just want a muted part. You can just pop the patch. That's nice. Now we got tremolos. I didn't see anything on this one in the user manual, but it looks like we do have a mod wheel. Seems to be controlling maybe the speed of the tremolo. Which is great. That's awesome. It's almost, it's got, you know, like a human playability aspect of this. Sounds really good. Doesn't sound robotic at all. It's 
great patch. I, I used this, uh, the tremolo in, in the piece a little bit just to feature it. Chords long. Got a little chucks in here too. Sounds good. And then I gotta imagine maybe one hand is upstroke, the other one's downstroke, so. It'll sound great. Chords tight. Chucks again, right there, that's awesome. And we got a, a CC wheel. All right, so we have major and minor chords uh, designed for keyboard split functionality. Uh, we're enabling the right hand to control down strokes and the left hand to handle up strokes. And then if we wanna access inverted chords, that's what the mod wheel's for. Two options there, so we get two inversions. Cool. That's fun. We got playable chucks. I like that they added these also in the patches, uh, so we don't have to just pull up this preset if we need it or not, but that's great that they added it as a separate patch for more playability and easeability for us. That's, that's great. And now we have some live grooves. And I believe it's split into four here because of tempo, because uh, we, we have them record at four different tempos. There's 90, 120, 150, And then 180. And I can hear that my contact is having some problems with that 180. So let's, let's change our DAW tempo to 180. Yeah, it sounds much better. Yeah, so we're going to want to roughly be around the tempo that, that you're set at when you're using these. Yeah, the 120 sounds really good at 120, so... Cool. That's awesome. I believe we used that a little bit in, in our piece, but I didn't pay attention to the tempo or what I was playing. So it might be a good idea. And then finally we have fret slides and noises. And these are very important to keep like a human kind of playability or realism in your pieces. So you kind of set this one, unless you're doing sound design. Uh, you'd set this as a, another track underneath your mandolin performance. That's the library. All right, so let's get into the song.
Awesome. So let's dive into this mandolin piece, which was a lot of fun. I, this is actually the first time I think I've ever written a song with mandolin. Learned a lot. You know, it's a G instrument. So I wrote the song in G major. Shout out to my days back when I was writing happy production library music for a jingle house here in the, the town I'm in. Happy music, you know, it, primarily it was like with a ukulele, but I decided to kind of uh, use those roots with this song. We get a lot out of this library, and like I said before, it, it shreds. This part, actually. So what I try to do here with this main piece here, or sorry, with this main idea was I wanted to show the repetition of, of notes and how it sounds so, so good uh, in context so alone solo, but also in, in the whole um, piece, it, it sounds great. I use that to its advantage along the way with all these legatos, and I had a fixed velocity here to 64 so it used that kind of that primary bread and butter as they put it in the manual their bread and butter legato and then i just made sure i was in g g major I, although i'm pretty sure i was in the notes um but never hurts when you're doing a solo these others were just uh different variations of how i wanted that lead player this this is in my mind if i sit back and close my eyes and listen this was one uh, this legato player was like one, just switching between muting and not muting and the chicken pecking and, and not uh, just getting. Just. Just different ways of playing the idea, articulation, if you will, and, and got a lot out of the, the library that way. I did keep it in that fix 64 on all three. Didn't dive into like the hammer on pull offs, but I think that would have been a lot of fun. Uh, maybe even some of the slides, things like that. So another take of this library, I definitely would be diving in there and, and getting that going. And that was the lead. Now there's a lot of options here that I could use with this just primary playability kind of patches, accompany patches or, or however we want to look at those, the non legatos. But main one was a lot of fun was these tight chords. Right. It's you, you can you can get some fun rhythms going. I, that was like my focus was, oh, OK, we are going to play a G chord and, and voiced uh, how it's going to be voiced. But let's get like a fun rhythm going, call and response it a little bit. And where I really wanted to see more of this library kind of go. And I know the Legatos, they're reserving the velocities for what patch you're using but i do lose some dynamics there and i wanted the dynamics especially in some of these like chicken pecking parts that's okay it still sounds really great and i do if i was thinking about this you know if i want the best performance i'm gonna want it maybe like how it is and i did process the you know the song anyway so it, it was totally fine and that is just one thing and i do get some of this velocity uh playability in these patches so i was using them to my advantage when i was making these kind of rhythmic <laughs> so that was fun we got some chord longs to vary up the strumming a little bit So if we go from tight to long. Also, I think the maybe the chord progression might change there a little bit. Yeah, we do go in the chorus, but uh, it was it was kind of nice to change the way that I'm strumming as well. That was really cool to have that option. And then we I think we have yeah live chuck grooves. So that was cool. Just added that in the background. We have, oh yeah, the, the tremolo is playing here. I'm 
playing with the mod wheel as I was playing because I didn't know that we the mod wheel affected speed until we just did that preset overview. So I just wanted to try that out. But it- and then make sure you just set the speed to... Yeah, that's a lot of fun. I didn't use any of these other patches, but I definitely could have found room for them. There's just so much you can do with this this library in, in so little time. And then, like I said, I wasn't super familiar with how I should apply these uh, fret slides and noise, but it could be as simple as, and this is just totally my assumption, uh, it's going in here, creating your MIDI, and then I would turn off the grid, and I would just start maybe adding some some noise like somewhere and make it very quiet probably even more quiet than that and just uh, having it more felt the passages and the way everything is playing and then just put it kind of in various areas uh, just so that it's kind of in there as as its own track and then you can uh, you know set the volume and adjust and just kind of have it sitting in the background and maybe apply some, some EQ or whatever and just kind of bury it a little bit, but it's there. It's just more like felt than, than heard. So that's the, the mandolin and using that other parts here. I use guitar. The strumming pattern is probably very familiar because it's part of native instruments. Uh, we just use strummed acoustic, the folk patch kind of felt like it would be a little folky tune mandolin bass again native instruments just rocking the Rickenbacker I did make some updates to this tweed man patch just had a nice little bass sound and then drums uh, shout out to maybe computer music magazine I don't know where I got this but there's a loop loft uh, old loop loft uh, drum kit uh, that was actually it was originally in like a three four groove but I cut it up in Ableton and then kind of set it to be a 4-4 groove with brushes and, and things like that just sounded good. But I also have these three here. Meat is the kick and snare. Potatoes is your, uh, you know, hi-hats and toms. Though I don't think I use the toms anywhere. And then cymbals, you know, crash ride. And we have the ride rock in here in the, in the chorus. So that's just kind of what that that's all about. So I, I used the kind of the the loops but cut them up and repurposed them for a 4-4 and then I established where I where I wasn't going to use loops just kick snare and hi-hat so it just kind of plays like this and that's kind of why you hear some of those weird gaps in time is it's probably likely due to me chopping up the the sample And that's the piece. It's time to wrap up our journey with some final reflections. It's clear that Musical Sampling's Hoard Mandolin Library is a comprehensive and high quality tool for composers and producers. The range of legato patches, from the versatile master legato main to the rhythmically focused chicken peck, along with all the other instrument patches, offers a wide array of possibilities for mandolin sounds in your composition. The library's high recording quality combined with the detailed and realistic articulation sets it apart as a premium choice for those seeking authentic mandolin sounds. The ease of use and the intuitive interface make it accessible for both beginners and seasoned professionals. At $139, it's a valuable investment for anyone looking to add high quality mandolin sounds to their musical arsenal. Whether you're composing music for a range of reasons, the Horde Mandolin Library offers the flexibility and quality needed to bring your ideas to life. This is Chester, signing off from The Sampleist, and I hope you've enjoyed this review. If you're hungry for more insightful reviews, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to stay tuned with all things The Sampleist. Until our paths cross again, keep having fun making your music. Cheers.